as a healer it could be a little difficult trying to get the gear that you need in order to do those epic heals but don't worry there are a couple ways to go about getting your healing gear easier in throne of liberty welcome back to the channel all about healing those dungeons my name is teddy with a couple comments asking me how to craft up green gear today we're going to go down how to craft up your green gear where to get your blue gear and a couple areas to start getting your end game gear to help out with those healing raids or just those co-op dungeons. If you enjoy Throne and Liberty, be sure to check out the channel for more. Like, subscribe, turn on all those notifications. And without wasting any more time, let's just jump into this healing gear guide for Throne and Liberty. Whether or not you've just started the game, looking to re-roll, or you're looking to get those gear upgrades, crafting the green grade gear in Throne of Liberty is extremely easy. In order to craft any of the green grade, you will have to have any of the lithographs, armor, weapon, or accessory, materials, a quality polished crystal. All of these can be obtained either with the Amatoy Expedition, open world dungeons, or can be obtained by dissolving some armor. Now, the best way to get any of the lithographs is going to be with the contract manager. When you first start out, the best place to get your contract started is going to be with the Starlight Observatory runes. Here has a great abundance of contracts that will give the green grade boxes for the materials, not to mention the polished crystals when completing the contracts. Checking the contracts, just make sure it has the lithograph or the material box that you want and accept the contract. Completing it will automatically send the armor lithograph, material box, weapon lithograph, or the accessory lithographs to your inventory, not to mention the training due that you'll need to increase your mastery on your weapons and that magic powder if you guys have not found any gear drops from any of the mobs. The higher level areas that you go, the higher level contracts that are available, you do have a daily amount of contracts that you can complete a day. These can be stacked up all the way to 60 and you can only accept five at a time. This does not include any special contracts that you already have and it is recommended that you take one contract at a time, refresh and take another contract. You might get lucky and get a precious blessing pouch which will give you a chance at either purple grade gear or more contract scrolls for a better chance at getting better loot. If you were lucky enough to get any of those pouches for completing your contracts you have a chance of getting any of the allied resistance force contracts. These can either be for Silius Abyss, Shadowed Crypt, Sanctum of Desire, and Saradoma Island. Three title tower scrolls can be bought daily from your contract manager. Scrolls can be broken down and remade in to the new one it will take two of the allied scrolls to make one of the new allied scrolls so if you have more of the Saradoma island and you don't want it you can break it down and craft one of the other scrolls at a two to one ratio if you do have ornate coins you can come over here to the shop and buy the precious blessing pouches this is perfect if you guys are not getting lucky at the dungeons and you're trying to go for some purple grade gear as you complete contracts, you do earn contract coins. In the contract coin merchant, you can buy a precious epic level 1 weapon selection chest, which has a choice of a purple grade weapon. This can be obtained only once, so I recommend getting this as soon as possible, so you can get your first purple weapon as soon as possible. You can get your lithographs in here too, not to mention you can get another blessing pouch. There's a daily limit on this, which I recommend getting this every single day. Tier 1 and Tier 2 crafting has to be done here at Venta Village, and tier 3 and tier 4 crafting has to be done over here in Stone Guard Castle. Another way to get gear early on is going to be with the lithograph book. Here you can exchange your gear for lithographs, material, even the gear you might need for upgrades. So I recommend going through your lithograph and seeing which ones you want to complete, see if it's going to be an upgrade for you. And it could be a fun way to go out there trying to kill the monsters or looking for those drops. Another way at a chance of getting easy healing gear is going to be with our weekly missions. Every week we have to complete objectives. Unlocking these has a chance of getting the gear that we might need. You will not be able to check which gear is going to be available until that week and you scratch that car off. If none of these are good, you can just choose the trait stones to unlock better traits for your gear that you already have. You really should try to complete as many objectives as you can so you have a higher chance at getting the resistance gear or any of the boss accessories that does drop in those dungeons. 
Another way to get your gear is going to be with the open world dungeons. Clicking any of the open world dungeons allows you to see the monster drop table. In here, you can scan down to see which monsters drop which items and the quality of the item. I recommend checking out all the monsters to make sure there's an item that you need before you go out and try to farm that monster. Some of the open world dungeons do have lower floors which provide more higher grade items, but this will require you to be in a group. One of the best places to get gear as a healer is going to be with your ant nest and your Cilius abyss over here in the ant nest you can get a lot of your invoker pieces not to mention you have a chance of getting some of the pieces of the hex weaver set taking a look at Cilius abyss the first and second floor has the most green grade gear that you can get and it is the easiest to do without a party heading down to the third floor has better grade loot but will require you to be in a party in order to actually damage or survive down there over here in the sanctum of desire killing the avalos hydromancer has a chance of dropping the swirling essence hat which is going to be a really really good helmet while you wait until you get your ascended having a set of two will increase your weakened duration which is perfect if you guys are using your vampiric touch next we have the shadowed crypt which has our long bow of the world tree there is no better bow for healing than this with coming with wisdom and health regen this can be traded to increase your mana regen not to mention your cooldown speed so i recommend going for this bow as soon as possible and like mentioned you can go around killing monsters over in the open world this will take a long time with the drop rates being low but if you click on the area that you're wishing to go to, you can see which monsters drop everything just like with the secret dungeons. Certain areas have really good drops like the heroic hat of resistance over here at the desperate zombies in the ruins of Terrane. So I recommend checking all of the monsters and seeing which ones you could get lucky. The best way to go about it is to get contracts in the area so you can kill the mobs and get a higher chance at getting some epic grade loot. Let's take a look at the dungeons. Starting out, you're not going to have a lot. Obviously, the first dungeon that you will unlock is going to be the Spectre's Abyss. In here, you can see has the Permafrost set. This is going to be the healing set to go for, but this will require you to be in a group and have dimensional contract tokens. The harder dungeons that you go down, the different loot, so I recommend checking out all the different bosses and seeing which pieces of gear that you need. Once you hit level 50, this is where the harder dungeons come in and our gear starts to get even thinner. Unfortunately, when it comes to Throne and Liberty, a lot of our healing gear will come from our guild raids and select individual places. There is no easy way to get it, but I can show you a couple good ways to try to get some type of gear as a replacement just to wait. Starting off with Death's Abyss. We're going to take a look at the Abyssal Grace Ring. This will add attack speed and mana cost efficiency. Throwing on some mana regen and trying to suit it better for a healer will be a nice stand-in while you're waiting for the better healing ring. I don't recommend going for the Karnak's Nether Bow, nor do I recommend going for the Grip of the Executioner. We're going to solely focus on going for Cloth and the healing gear that is better suited for healers. Butcher's Canyon is a perfect dungeon to get those Ascended Guardian Gloves. Our main goal as a healer is to get our Transcended One set. A lot of the gear is not in the game, or if it is, it is locked behind your guild. So this is going to be our end game best in slot gear that we should be focusing on. I don't recommend going for the Divine Justicar Mask with having Dexterity and Critical Hit Chance, but if you guys are a crit healer, it is a good stand-in while you wait for a better healing helmet. Taking a look at Tyrant's Isle, maybe the Ancient Ceridoma Bracers might be something to look into with having 2 Dexterity, Mana Regen, and maybe if you're lucky you can trade it to help out with your heals, but there are better bracelets and this can serve as a little stand-in. I don't recommend going for the longbow here either with having more DPS geared, but let's take a look at the last dungeon being the Cave of Destruction. The Cave of Destruction has our best in slot wand, the Lacarius Coveted Tome. I recommend trying to get this dungeon done as soon as possible just for this wand. Not to mention, we can also get our Supreme Devotion Cloak. This is our best in slot cloak that we can get having critical hit chance, mana regen, and cooldown speed. You can trade this to better help out your healing, so I recommend trying to get the cave of destruction done as soon as possible again this will take a group and will require dimensional contract tokens so be prepared to go in with friends your guild or go in with randoms 
While out there doing the dungeons, once you complete it, you will be given a dimensional soul shard when you open the chest. These can be exchanged for certain chests that has more gear that you might need if you haven't gotten lucky in the dungeons. It will take a lot of the tokens, so I recommend planning out which ones you want to keep farming for. But if that's not something you're looking into, don't worry. Taking 10 of each token, you can make the dimensional essence. These are great for making different equipment too. Not to mention for completing those secret contracts in the abyssal dungeons, we can make a chest of our choice. I recommend crafting the shadow chest for the longbow of the world tree. And if you guys are going with the staff healing route, the staff of the lucid light, is from the tyrant's chest. I highly suggest taking a look at all the chests available to see how to get them so you know what to go for and you're not wasting your time. Another thing to use the dimensional essence of salvation is to make your dungeon weapons if you guys have not gotten lucky with those co-op dungeon drops like me. This will take 10 of each token to make one dimensional essence salvation so make sure you guys have 20 tokens before even attempting this or you'll be waiting. We can't talk about gear without mentioning the world bosses. A lot of our gear does come from world bosses and other bosses that will spawn around the world. Clicking on the timetable, here you can see which bosses are going to spawn and which items they drop. A good one to go for early on if you happen to see Excavator spawn is going to be the Excavator's Mysterious Scepter. Unfortunately, this has strength and max mana, but it does come with the Excavator's Breath, which gives additional 380 health heal per 6 seconds when using swift healing skills on allies with 40% lower health. There is a cooldown of 30 seconds, but this is great for going out in those dungeons early on while you're still learning to heal. Not to mention, this can be used towards endgame too. The excavator does spawn over here in the abandoned stone mason town, so be sure to check the time and see when you should run over there. As Riel has our swirling essence pants, this is great for you guys if you guys are going for the weakened duration, wisdom, weakened chance, and the mana cost efficiency. Not to mention there is the divine justicar pants too if you guys get lucky enough to get that as a stand-in. This will spawn over here in the shattered temple. Malakar over here in the mana ways has a chance of giving you the gilded infernal wristlet. This is a good stand-in but having bonus damage, hit chance, and max mana if you guys are struggling with the hit, trying to get those weakens off, or anything of the such. Then we have Morakai over here in Carmine Forest. He has the Abyssal Grace Pendant which has sleep chance and mana cost efficiency. This is a good stand-in while you're waiting for a better healing necklace. But over on the third floor of Silius Abyss, Cornelius will spawn and he has the Swirling Essence Gloves. This is perfect with having the attack range increase, wisdom, and critical hit if you guys are doing the weak and heal route. Not to mention, if you guys need a quick stand-in, the Divine Justicar attire does drop from him. It gives weaken and wisdom, so I recommend going for this boss as soon as possible. Cornelius does also drop the abyssal grace charm too which has spine chance and mana cost efficiency this is another good stand-in it just has to be traded up for your heals there are two versions of every boss one conflict one peaceful so make sure you don't go into a conflict one instead there is one arc boss over here in the sandworm lair being the queen balandir she does have a chance of dropping the ascended guardian hood the swirling essence robe not to mention the Band of Universal Power. I'm not exactly sure when the Archboss event will spawn, but if you see it, make sure to come over here for a chance at really, really good healing gear. If you guys are going with the Staff Healing, she does drop the Queen Balandir's Hive Mind Staff. But again, this is an Archboss event. I'm not sure when this starts. Comment down below if you guys have an idea and how many times it will spawn during a week. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's only one, but who knows? But speaking of the guild boss versions, let's take a look at all the bosses that we have. These guild boss versions can be done with the weekly limit, which is reset every Wednesday at 7, and requires you to be a certain guild level to unlock the guild fight. But it is an easier way of obtaining those hard to get healing gear that you can't get from the world bosses. We have the Abyssal Grace Pendant from Morakai. Excavator has the Wand. Chernobog has Arcane Shadow Shoes if you're looking for a replacement. Malakar has the Gilded Infernal Wristlet. Cornelius has the Ascended Guardian Hood, Divine Justicar Attire, not to mention the Abyssal Grace Charm. Azrael has the Swirling Essence Pants and the Divine Justicar Pants if you're looking for a replacement. Menzerok has the Swirling Essence Hat, the Divine Justicar Gloves, not to mention Plus Templar Choker Necklace. 
a dentist has the girdle of spectral skulls if you guys are needing more range defense dexterity and mana regen getting into the more locked bosses we have the wrapped coin necklace from grand alon here this is perfect with having wisdom max mana and mana regen nerma has the ascended guardian pants the divine Jessica shoes and lastly the clasp of the overlord if you guys are trying to go for more critical hit and cooldown speed not to mention that max health these bosses will require different milestones to be completed not to mention we have to complete chapter 5 as a server but once that chapter is hit we do have these bosses unlocked unfortunately if you're not lucky with the world drop you still get one of the special resistance medals these can be used to make your armor and your resistance weapons so if you guys are still struggling with your world bosses save up your resistance medals and exchange them for the lithograph that you want now the last way we have is with the auction house in here you can buy either the weapon outright whichever armor you're looking for if it's available your accessories not to mention the lithograph to go ahead and craft up your own armor or weapons i recommend taking a look in here seeing what's available what you can make there's not a lot of our healing gear in here but you can get lucky every so often and find a cheap piece of gear that can be used as a replacement unfortunately they are priced a little expensive especially for healing gear so don't get discouraged and try to find where they drop see if it's easier for you to get it or try to list as much as you can in in hopes that you can buy the piece that you need you never know you could make a lot of loose and even as a free player if you're still confused on where to find any of your gear one of the best places to check is with your crafting option in here you can see all of the gear that is available hitting the acquired from will show you where you can obtain it either from killing guild bosses arch bosses secret dungeons rift stones abyssal contracts gathering your lithographs in here has all the locations from the best in slot all the way down to your green grade that you can get i recommend checking out all of the gear here and seeing which ones you want to go for now I don't recommend trying to craft up your green grade loot with how easily it is to get the blue grade to drop but if you need to the green grade is available with just how easy it is to come by in the contracts or over there in the open world dungeons. I hope this helps you start gearing as a healer and getting you ready for those guild raids or co-op dungeons. Let me know if you guys are struggling trying to find your healing gear. I know it's a little difficult with having everything locked behind the group content. I wish they would go ahead and figure out a different way to give us more of a chance to get our gear but with the different ways that we do have it's not that bad it just takes a lot of rng but let me know how you guys feel about it and with all of that said i will see you guys in the next one keep healing out there everyone